Okay, Hunter, and uh, I want you to change two things in setup right away. Uh, the grip on your hand, I want that V on the right hand to go right up your forearm. And all it means is that you have to turn your hand just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. You, uh, just turn it to the right, like you're, you know, opening a doorknob type of thing. But turn it, turn it to the right and get that V pointed right up your forearm, okay? You look closely at our model, Mr. Como, you can see the same thing. On me, you'll see the same thing. And also in setup, I want you to lean your legs to the left. If you look very closely, um, Lee is leaning his two legs towards the left. And I lean into my hip as well, but I'm really just leaning my legs slightly to the left. Okay? The weight of your will go into your left heel. You'll feel the weight go, go towards the middle of your foot or possibly I want it back in the left heel on the um, outer part and leave it there, okay, for the rest of the swing. And that'll start to calm your body down. You've done a great job of getting the head in the right position, and I'll show some of that. But there's a little more to it than that. And I'll show you exactly what we're talking about here. I'll bring you up to the top. And let's get you right here, right there. Okay. So let's bring Lee up to the top as well. All right. So I'm not as concerned that grip change, it'll, it'll change your, your, at the top there when you're making the axe move. Uh, Lee's lower. I'm higher. You know, I'm in the middle of both of you. Um, that's fine. But let's look at, look at the move downward. And you can see where Lee's left glute is facing, you know, more target word, right? He faces that that way. I'm, I do that as well. Um, and it's, it gives you a lot of um, good positions and nice leverage uh, positions as you come down in the downswing. Uh, that's something we can talk about later. But let's get this other stuff right first. And I'm going to show you here. Okay, you're following your shoulder nicely, all right? So you can see you've done a great job of changing that head position. But watch Lee, okay? Let's bring Lee down, and he's following down. His right side of his head is angling. And look at about where your hands are, okay? Club, eh. You're similar, okay, but I, I, if I had you leaning a little bit left, you'd, you'd look a little more like that. And see how your chin is tucked down? I want that chin up. Can you see how, how Lee's got that chin up? All right, that that way, that, if you, you know, think of if you're playing even baseball, you wouldn't swing a bat with your chin down into your, by your sternal notch there, you know, down in your sternum, press down. You know, that'll cause stress on the back of your neck, okay? If you have it up, you know, you, you can turn it, you know, everything can pivot underneath it, actually. You know, turn in your neck, your your uh, shoulders are, are pivoting underneath it off, of, you know, right around the sternum, sternal notch. It'll just pivot around nicely, okay? So anyway, let's let's go a little further. Let's take lead down. Let's get them all the way to parallel. Well, okay, and it'll be a little tough to see here, but when he's palm up, his palm and my palm are facing basically skyward, right? Almost like we're curling a weight with our right arm. And if you change that grip, you'll start to see the same thing where you're kind of facing us right now, the camera, you've got your wrist bent back and it's facing out at us. So you're really going to slap at the ball. Um, we're going to hinge our wrist up and down, like cracking the whip. You know, it doesn't bend back and forth. It just hinges up and down. It's almost like a, a karate chop into the back of the ball, flick, uh, 
casting um, the, a fly rod, you know, those types of images. So that little grip change will help to give you this look. Now, if you had your head up as well, get the chin up, you'd look a little more similar to Lee. Okay, so let's, let's take it a little further. And go down to the strike, okay? He's just before the strike, and I'm going to roll you to that same point, right? Well, we're not going to catch that exactly. So let's go down to where the club is at your right foot and Lee's is at the right foot. We don't have enough frames on you, unfortunately. But you can see his head didn't move. It hasn't moved since the top. If you watch Lee, watch. His head, once he gets looking out in front right here, towards the front heel line, he doesn't get to that point. He, his head doesn't rotate anymore. He's done. All he's going to do is bring that club down, see? And look at how far forward his hands are at the strike. Where your hands at the strike, because you're leaping up off that leg, you got the shallow divot instead of a deep divot, and that's because you're not leaning the legs left and the chin tucked down as well. You've got to jump up. You're kind of still jumping up. And you see the left leg snapping up? And see, his legs won't move at all. Watch. And quiet. They roll a little bit. If you're watching his left leg, he rolls on that heel. And the weight is back on that heel on that side. If you set up that way, there's no reason to jump up and down. And you can get very consistent. And it's easier to hit the ball. Okay. And it will get rid of this leaping, which is so much better than when we started. So much better. Really good job. Um, we're getting into the finer points now. Uh, at least hitting an eight iron here, 180 yards, just to give you an example of how efficient that can be. Okay, there. So I think that should about cover it. So I'll just let him roll. Good job. Keep it up.